Welcome, I'm Pastor Janine from the Cornell and Odell United Methodist Church. Happy Mother's Day. You've all heard the familiar song, Mary Did You Know? It's written about a mom, Mary, holding her baby son, Jesus, in her arms and dreaming about the future. When the angel told her she was pregnant and would be having the Son of God, she didn't understand it all at first, but she treasured it deep down in her heart. This shows you how important God sees the family versus being born in some monastery up in the mountains. We celebrate moms today because being a mom is no light thing. Moms need to recognize the awesome responsibility of rising up to the challenge of being a mom. On the flip side is the story of kids. For kids, God teaches us that one of the Ten Commandments is that we're to honor our father and mother. Honor means to show respect and esteem. As a kid, we're to have an attitude of obedience. God says in Ephesians 6.1, Children, obey your parents. It's the right thing to do. One little boy said he figured it out, saying, When t mom tells me to do something, I just do it. When a child turns 18, they're released with the blessings into adulthood. And now one of the best ways they can honor their mom is to honor God with their life. So at age 30, we see Jesus at a wedding and his mom is there. The family hosting runs out of wine. Mary has lived her entire life with the knowledge that Jesus is the Messiah, the one sent from God to save the world. So far, he's gathered a few fishermen together and she asked Jesus to rectify the situation by finding more wine. Yet Jesus replies, how does that concern you and me? My time or hour has not come yet. It's almost as Mary, as if Mary's not listening and she tells the servants, do whatever he tells you to do. What we do know is that Jesus goes ahead and performs his first miracle, yet it's done almost in secrecy. I think Jesus did the miracles for Mary, yet he probably wanted to say, look, mom, you may not fully understand the complete plan that God has for me, but it's not going to look like what you think. Or mom, you don't realize yet that my hour will really take place on a cross that I'll be nailed to. This miracle of making new wine affirmed to her that he was the chosen one. And it was a special way to honor his mom and show deep respect. What do we learn about Jesus on this? The best way we can honor our moms is to follow God's plan for our lives, even when our moms may not completely understand what that is. Sometimes when we're exhausted, the devil will tell us, it's too hard serving God. Throw in the towel. It is hard daily giving up our own will for what God wants us to do, especially when we're put in a dangerous situation. But we have peace when we know we're doing exactly what God wants us to do. Today, if you're a woman and God has chosen to bless you with children, the highest and best vocation for you is being a mom. Find your strength in God to be the very best mom that you can be to your kids. Here's three encouraging points. First, be a mom of great faith. It used to be that in the family, if dad drifted away from the faith, you could still always count on mom. But that's not the case anymore. More and more moms today are struggling to find the faith to believe in God that can move mountains if necessary to keep the family on the straight and narrow. Moms, you can change this. Yes, moms, in your hands, more than anyone else, lies the salvation of the world. Believe in a great and holy God who can do anything for you and your family. Second, realize you're not going to be perfect. No one is perfect, not even Mary. She made mistakes, and you will too. And in the Bible, guess what? There is not one perfect family. There's lots of examples in the Bible of what not to do, but every family is marked by sin. We're all born into sin. None of us are gonna be perfect, 
And that's why God gives us grace. When we wrap ourselves and others in grace, your kids will learn that they don't have to be perfect either. When we fall down in sin, God helps pick us up again. We serve a God of second chances. Third, see all your trials and bumps in the road as chances for God to work in your life. We grow in our trials just as the church grows in persecution. Choose to invite God to help you see the world the way he sees it. Jeremiah 1.5 tells us, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. God knows the perfect woman who should be our mother, how her character and nature will be imprinted upon us in order to give us unique traits and features. I love how God puts a desire in men and women's hearts to reach out and adopt little ones. I'll never forget the blue-eyed blonde boy. He was from Russia that American parents had received right before the government cut off all the adoptions out of Russia because of political reasons. They already had two little girls of their own and God placed it in their hearts to adopt a two-year-old boy that had never been touched in the orphanage. Mothers look at their children as a continual work in progress, even when they have grown up on, and they're on their own. Mothers can't help but be interested in who their kids are dating or how they're doing in the working world. We see mothers and grandmothers insert their influence right into the next generation. My mom still remembers her grandma sitting her on her lap, this was 75 years ago, and telling her moral things to be mindful of and the do's and don'ts in life. In the Bible, Timothy had a mother and a grandmother who taught him the truths of the Bible. Because of this, Paul had confidence in Timothy that he would carry on the torch of faith. Lately, I've been around some kids whose parents have instilled a deep foundation of faith in their hearts, and it's so uplifting. One woman has concerns for her son who has picked up worldly half-truths. During the pandemic, he's back at home living with them, and she feels that God is redeeming time with her son. It's affording her some heartfelt conversations with him as they discuss God's firm truths of the Bible. Each Sunday at their kitchen table, they have coffee with Christ time, sharing what they know is true about God. A mother's work is never done, and moms know that Jesus will finish what they started, bringing us to faith in God. My mom taught me how to pray, to sing, to dance, and give and forgive, and to discover Jesus. I hope that's your uh, story too, and that you're repeating the process with your kids. God loves all mothers and fathers so much, more than we can possibly know. His Bible is full of wonderful examples today of mothers to copy. Hannah, Eve, Mary, Deborah, Sarah, Rebecca, Ruth, Rachel, and Elizabeth, to name just a few. Don't think, Mom that you're in this alone. God is right by your side, guiding and protecting your little ones. He wants what you want, a child that grows to know the fullness of his love as you demonstrate your love to your child. Know that when you believe and accept Jesus into your heart, that he has written your names in the Lamb's Book of Life. What's paramount? Our deepest desire is that our kids and grandkids will accept Jesus into their hearts. Let's prepare them faithfully for service in the family of God. Amen. And now's our special time of communion. You can go gather some bread, Cheerios, or crackers. Any kind of juice will do. At communion, we remember how Jesus went to the cross to die for our sins and all we have to do is believe in him, ask him into our hearts, ask him to forgive our sins, turn around, repent, not to do those sins anymore. And there is no sin too big to keep you out of heaven. You just ask God to forgive and he will forgive you. At the Last Supper, Jesus took the bread. He broke it. He said, this is my body broken for you. He took the wine and said, this is my blood of the new covenant. 
Do this in remembrance of me. Go out and enjoy your Sunday and enjoy your mom. We'll see you next week.